Hello everyone, thank you so much for tuning in for this week's live session. My name is Ashwin and I'm the PTE tutor for Aussie's PT Parramatta. We are located at 24 Hunter Street in Parramatta. So, if you guys have seen the promo video, I said that this was the time to address the elephant in the room. And I'm talking about the writing section in the PTE academic module. Now guys, apologies if I can't answer questions on the spot because I'm using another device to go live this time. So all your questions will be asked or answered after the session. So let's start the writing module in the PTE. Now a lot of people who come to, comes to my consultations, they often remark this. When they get a score less than the superior English, which is 7, 9 plus, they say that, look, I'm not good in this module. And that's why I don't get the score, which is, which is required to get me an A teach. So guys, let me tell you, because PTE is all about overlapping skill sets, you are not bad in any module. It's just because you can't do the balancing act that's why you're getting a low score in a module. Let me explain. Let's take it for example, your writing module. So writing is assessed in different sections in the PTE. Of course, it's assessed in the writing module, but also your writing is assessed in your listening section. When you do fill in the blanks, your writing is assessed. When you do summarize spoken text, your writing is assessed. When you do write from dictation and listening, your writing is assessed. And especially in reading for the drag down menus one, the fill in the blanks, your writing is also assessed there. So all these different modules contribute to your writing score. So please don't worry if you get, and this is the case for all modules in the PTE, except for the speaking, which is a standalone module. So if you get low marks in any one of the modules, guys, it's not that you're bad in reading, listening or speaking. It's just because of this factor of overlapping skill sets. Let me start with the writing module now. Comparatively, writing is the easiest module because there are only two tasks that you need to complete. One is write an essay and the second one is summarize written text. Now you might get a combination of questions in both of these. You might get one summarized written text and two essays. A lot of my students have got this combination. Two summarized written text and two essays. Now this is a bit challenging because you'll be writing a lot and you will be tired. Let's hope it doesn't happen to you. Now you'll never get like one summarized written text and three essays because that will actually put the whole exam out of sync with time. All right, let's start with the essay writing section. Now, pretty straightforward, you have to write an essay. We all have been writing essays, especially if you come into Australia for any educational purposes or back in school, we might have actually started writing essays since a long time. So guys, so this is the time that you actually breathe out. Because in respect to PTE, you do not need to write an academic essay with a lot of vocabulary, strict grammar. What PTE focuses on is your structure for the essay. So basically, the structure includes three main things. Does your essay have a proper introduction? Does it have a proper body part for the essay? And how good is your conclusion? And how good does it gel with your introduction? These are things to think because I've seen students just write abruptly and start an essay by saying that the topic has had a lot of advantages and they start and they jump into the body part. Now that is lack of form for your essay. Now, if you guys happen to glance across a document called the PTE scoring guide, it's clearly written that you get your marks for a good form or content. Okay. Now how to write an introduction? That's a golden question. Let me start explaining that. So your introduction is what explains to the reader. So say imagine a layman is reading your essay. It should actually give him a brief explanation of what the whole essay is about. So when you always start the introduction, start with a general statement. Now, if I'm writing an essay, I blame everything that happens on the process of globalization. So say, for example, if you have a topic, say law changes human behavior, this is how probably I will start my essay. Globalization has actually caused a major concern in which people as people have been discussing a lot about laws that change human behavior. Now my next instinct would be to write a one liner and again another general statement that briefly relates to the topic. So because the topic is about law changing human behavior, I'll write since people migrate from one country to another they should actually abide the laws of the local area in which they live in to ensure that they're doing things rightfully. 
Now the third line is the most important thing in your essay. That's where you take a stand. When you come to the topics in the PTE for an essay, you basically have different kinds of topics, but mainly align to the following that I'm about to say. You might get an opinion essay. You might get an agree or disagree essay. You might get a problem solution essay. So in whichever topic you get, you have to take a stand. So in this case, with the example of law changing human behavior, let's take this as an agree disagree essay. Now what I'm going to write for the third liner where I take my stand is, now I pers am personally of the opinion that law does change human behavior and I'm about to list my points of arguments with examples coming below. Now a lot of people ask, should I write examples for the PT essay? You have to guys. Again, if referring back to the PT scoring guide, which almost all the tutors use, use unanimously, yes, they do give marks for your examples. Your examples shouldn't be something authentic. You can create your own examples. So for this case, I can say that in the case of law changing human behavior, one of my friends used to regularly speed or avoid fines, right? So one of my um, speeds and fines. So that's the first point that I can actually uh, think about, right? In Australia, you know how much fines you get for speeding, which is kind of a huge amount. So I'll say as an example that my friend never uh, you know, obeyed the speed limit when back in his country. So when he came to Australia, he was driving under the speed limit just because he was afraid of the fine. So in that case, yes, law does change human behavior. When you come to the conclusion, please make sure that you write the same thing that you wrote in your introduction. If you agree to a topic, please end the essay by saying that all the points that I've stated does support my premises and hence I agree to the essay and do believe that law does change human behavior. Okay. Now, one thing that I guys would like to highlight to you guys is using the backspace key while you correct your errors. Spelling is something that is really important for your PTE. If you check the scoring guide for more than one spellings, you're not getting marks for that criteria. Okay. So basically it's more than two or one spellings. You're not getting any marks for that. So that's a major cause why people lose marks. You might find it silly, but that might be the difference between getting a 78 and a 79. A 79 is a superior English. Now coming back to the next topic in the writing section. Summarize written text. Now it is in this task where you actually read a passage in front of you. The passage may vary in length and it's your task to write a short summary. Now guys, this is what I've noticed in a lot of sites that gives you practice. The summaries that they write are often 75 words long. Now I do agree that PTE gives you the opportunity to write 5 to 75 words. But the moment you cross 50 words, it's wrong. Why? Basically because when you write more points, you make more mistakes. The main idea behind this activity is this. In summarized student text, you are only supposed to write a one sentence summary, which means you can only put the full stop at the very end of the sentence that you write. So when you write 50 and above, you are making a lot of mistakes with respect to grammar. Because the only way we can actually write one sentence by putting full stop at the very end is by putting a lot of commas. If your answer contains a lot of commas and a lot of conjunctions and subordinates. So conjunctions are basically fanboys. Now that's an easy way to remember what conjunctions are. Use the acronym fanboys, which basically means for and nor, but, or, yet, and so. With respect to subordinates, it's a fancy term for what we call connecting words, sentences that connect two ideas together. With respect to the PTE, by experience of doing a lot of questions for students and practice, what I can say is that the main two connectors people use are however and moreover. Okay? So if a whole passage adds on points one another, what happens is you use moreover. If the first paragraph of the passage agrees with something and when it comes to the end, it disagrees with something, then you use however because you're showing a contradiction. So the next question comes in, what is relevant when you get a lot of information in the passage? Now guys, the golden rule in this one is please do not list out anything 
you're not supposed to list out any words. Now, one of my students recently gave her exam. She got a superior English course. She got A teach in all modules. This is a happy day for me. And she remarked that, yes, we did a practice in class about sea creatures. And that passage came for the exam. So the passage actually goes somewhat like this. More sea creatures, and then they start listing out different sea creatures like whales, sharks, dolphins, anemones, shrimp, all the other marine animals that live in the ocean. And they say that they use sound to communicate with each other and they use sound to sustain their lives. Then there is a lot of background information regarding noise, how things work, opinions of marine biologists. And towards the end of the paragraph, they say the undersea noise pollution, which is caused by seismic surveys, military operations, submarines, all disturb, human, all disturb the marine life. Now, if I were to summarize that point, what I'll do is I will never include list of words in my answer. So basically, from the first paragraph, if they say more sea creatures like fish, dolphin, whales, whatever, I'll just say that more sea creatures use sound to communicate and sustain their lives. Mostly, this is how a past paragraph is written. The writer of the paragraph will actually say the first lines of the paragraph will be the main information that you need. And the rest of the things that follow in a paragraph will be the description. And your task, guys, is to actually find those main points. Just to give you a trick, guys, with the experience that I, that I got from doing a lot of paragraphs, often this is what happens. The first paragraph and the last paragraph of the, some of the passages will have the major information that you need to frame your answer. Skim reading is really important. Skim read through the passages to see if they have descriptions about a lot of other facets that might come into the passage, a lot of numbers, avoid them and take the main points in between them. Now, when you write it down, please make sure that you do not include more than one fanboy and one connector in your sentence. So if you use just one fanboy, so you can, choose, you can choose from a platter that is for, and, but, nor, or, yet, so. You can choose any one of them and don't choose more than two connecting words because that's wrong grammar. This section is important mainly because of the reason that your reading is also assessed in the summarized written text because to a degree, it also assesses your comprehension. So these two activities are really important in your writing section. Now, just because I'm talking of writing, I also need to address the other factors that contributes to your writing scores. Basically, in listening section, it starts off with summarized spoken text. You have to write everything in correct grammar. And then the most important part is just write from dictation that comes towards the end of your listening. Time management plays an important role because you're supposed to get three or more write from dictations to ensure that you can get a 79 above for your BTE and 25% of marks from writing dictation is contributed to your writing section as well. Just follow simple rules. When you start a sentence, you start with a capital letter. When you end a sentence, you end with a full stop. And these small tricks and these small pointers might sound silly to you, but under the stress of the exam, these small mistakes can cost your marks. Just to sum up, guys, in the writing section, there are two subtasks available. One is summarized written text, and the other one is the essay writing. You might get different combinations of questions, such as you might get one summarized written text, two essays, two summarized written text, and two essays sometimes. With respect to summarized written text, please don't go collecting all the unnecessary examples and make a sentence. Make sure that you write a succinct sentence. Succinct means short and sweet. So just for continued evaluation purposes, we strongly suggest that you write anywhere between 20 to 42 words. That's good enough. For essay writing, please follow a good structure. Use a lot of phrases, like just to refresh your ideas, just type go to Google and just type in phrases to improve your essay and they will give you a list of phrases, like in my opinion, as a result of, on one hand, on the other than, on the other hand, I'm sorry. All this will denote a flow to your essay and that's what you need to score marks. Make sure that you write above 200 words for the essay because the word limit is between 200 to 300. Make sure you at least write somewhere around 240 to 250 words in the essay. Restrict yourself from using the backspace key because even though you use the backspace keys to correct your mistakes, it is counted. It might, it will affect your marks. So on that note, guys, do a lot of practice. There is a lot of practice material available online where you can get a lot of exam questions and other practice materials. Now this is the thing, 
if you listen to someone and then go directly to the exam you won't do good in writing because writing is all about practice you have to practice so that you get better at writing when you practice at home guys please do not practice in a word file because the word has the tendency to point your mistakes out if you are practicing any type of written content for the BTE please do practice it in a notepad file because the notepad file does not point your mistakes so you have to you do your own proofreading i hope these tips will help you in the future to get the score that you need guys for any inquiries regarding to pt just get in touch with Aussie's paramedic and i'm here to solve your doubts thank you so much for tuning in guys have a great week ahead